I am Brother Stephen Elabo, welcoming you to Deeper Life Bible Church, Charlottesville, United States, a place where the undiluted Word of God is being preached. You are about to listen to our general superintendent, Pastor W.F. Kumoye, as a comfort to share the mind of God with you and your family. I want you to be ready to pick up your pen and your paper and jot down important messages as they will do you good. God bless you and remain blessed. Heavenly Father, we thank you today. We bless your name because you brought us together. We thank you, Lord, for everyone here listening. And we thank you for everyone everywhere outside the headquarters here listening. We know that something good is going to happen. Something great and marvelous is going to happen. You are going to touch every lad. You are going to change everything. I'm asking, Lord, that every problem represented here tonight, you take everything away in Jesus' name. I pray that nobody will go back home the same in Jesus' name. Lift us higher. Take us higher. Higher than we have ever been before. Take us in Jesus' name. Confirm your word in every life. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Thank you very much. We can sit down. We're coming to Isaiah chapter 40. And I'm going to read from verse 28 to verse 31. As we come together at this time, I want to assure you tonight, the power of God is here. I want to assure you, every problem you have brought, every challenge you have brought, every difficulty you have brought, everything is vanishing away tonight in Jesus' name. Look at Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28. As thou not known, as thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, he fainteth not, neither is he weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faith. Power is coming to you tonight. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord, they that wait upon the Lord, anybody there waiting upon the Lord, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run, they shall not be weary. You will run, you will not be weary. They shall walk and they shall not faint. You will walk and you will not faint in Jesus' name. It looks like a long time now since we saw face to face. But great things are happening. And I want to report to you, God is answering your prayer that you are praying every time for your pastor, your father in the Lord. And many, many miracles are happening everywhere. Amen. And your own is going to happen tonight. Since the last time we saw face to face, I've been in Zambia. And in Zambia, there was um, a lady that uh, had one finger cut. She was trying to close the door. And then she banged the door on one of her fingers. And the finger caught a part of it and fell on the ground. In her pain and confusion, she ran to the hospital. And she said, I need help. When they saw the hand, they saw... They said, where is the part that's cut off? And she said, it's in the house. 
They sent somebody to the house and picked it up. They said they couldn't sew it again because it's taking some time. Then she went to another hospital, a Chinese hospital. They told her the same thing. She was very sorrowful. And then she came back home. She spoke to the sister leading the women there, the wife of the pastor. And eventually, the courage just says it's not sickness. It's just that that finger is caught. And eventually, we're having a program here at the headquarters. There is power at the headquarters. And we're transmitting the program like we're doing tonight. And she said, here is my finger. It is deformed. It is caught. By the way, the other part that was caught on the ground had been thrown and flushed away in the toilet. All she did was to point that finger to the screen. As we said, the final amen, the finger grew back. If that is happening, if that is happening, far away, when we cannot see face to face, how about you today here, a miracle is coming your way. In Zambia, a brother went to have, went to take a son of a neighbor to the meeting. That son was totally blind, nine years of age. And eventually we prayed, like we're going to pray tonight. The Lord is going to take you higher. After the prayer, it appeared that nothing happened, but something has happened. And to you, something is happening. They got back home. Uh, in the morning, the following day, the boy got up and could see everything clearly. Now, blind eyes are opening. And by the grace of God, if you are blind tonight, sight miraculously is coming to you in Jesus' name. We left there, then I went to Burkina Faso. In Burkina Faso, I got there before the meeting. And uh, before the meeting, I had to visit the local churches. And some of the members were waiting in their churches. It wasn't to preach, it wasn't to pray, it was just to see them and see those local churches. But we had a sister there that was paralyzed, having crutches. And she sat at the edge. And when all the other people stood up to wave and to greet me, she couldn't do that because she was totally paralyzed. As I came into the church building, I waved at her and said, God bless you. I can wave it to you now and I'm saying, God bless you. You are blessed tonight in Jesus' name. And so I got to the front of the church and I said, I'm happy to be here. It's wonderful and all that. I could say this starting tonight. It's not time for preaching now. It's not time for prayer now. Come in the evening and then the Lord will touch you. And then I said bye-bye. I was going out. As I was going out, because she was paralyzed and she was sorrowful, I felt that I would encourage her. I said, my sister, you'll be all right. And then I took hold of her hand and said, God bless you. And as I came out, all the other people ran out just to say bye-bye. And she was the only one remaining in the hall. And then she said, how is it? I'm not able to stand up. I'm not able to go and greet the pastor bye-bye. But the pastor said, God bless you. And said, you'll be all right. All of a sudden, she threw the sticks away. And she got up. And she got up. And she wanted to catch uh, the, the car so that she too can wait for me. And she started walking and then started running. The Lord healed her completely. In the evening when we were to give testimony, the lady came up and uh, the brother going to interview her said, but you are not sick. You don't have any problem. She said, you don't know me. I'm the one in the afternoon. The pastor said, God bless you. And now I'm working very well. If that is happening to them over there, something is coming your way tonight. From Burkina Faso, we were in Togo. 
in Togo, there was uh, this uh, woman, she had cancer. And the cancer was in the final stage. It was like she was going to pass off any time. And then that night, we prayed. As we were praying, she began to vomit blood. And they gave her a bowl, and she vomited much blood into that bowl. As we said the final amen, then the vomiting stopped. She got up completely well, totally miko. And the pastor said, that woman healed of cancer is still totally healed. Your healing will be permanent in Jesus' name. From Burkina Faso now, I was in the uh, Benin Republic, and there was uh, this a young man, 22 years of age. She, he was born with a part of the body missing. That is, he was not complete. And he was feeling ashamed because it was an obvious problem in their family. All the other children, all the other people, every part of them complete. But in his own case, it was just like that. And then, in, uh, you know, we prayed and said in the name of Jesus, whatever miracle you need, get it right now. Before we opened our eyes, a creative miracle had taken place. And that part that was missing from birth had been created instantaneously. Tonight is your night. I said tonight is your night. There was a woman that had big, goiter on the neck and uh, so we rounded up and then I said let us pray and we, we closed our eyes before we opened our eyes that goiter had vanished away and so the power of God is at work and that power is coming to you tonight in Jesus name but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as eagles. And then it says, they shall run and they shall not be weary. I said, you will run, you will not be weary. They shall walk and they shall not faint. You will not faint. All your faith will be taken away in Jesus' name. Tarrying for God's power manifestation. Tarrying for waiting upon the Lord. Tarrying for God's power manifestation manifestation. I divide the message to three parts. Number one, God's eternal power for the weary. God's eternal power for the weary. If you're weary, if you're troubled, if you're sick, if you're oppressed, if you're afflicted, if you're discouraged, you're weary. There is God's eternal power. And that power is for you tonight. It will roll away your problem. In Genesis chapter 18 and verse 14. Genesis chapter 18, verse 14. It says, Is anything too hard for the Lord? Is anything too hard for the Lord? The Lord is challenging you tonight. Look at the problems you have. Look at what makes you weak and weary. Look at what's oppressing your life. And look at the depression of your life. And the Lord is saying, tonight, at the end of this message, when we call upon him, he will answer your prayer. If you are wondering, the mountain is too big. The situation is too hard. I want to tell you, there is nothing too hard for God. Impossibilities only with men. There is no impossibility with our God. Tonight is your night. What men have failed to do, God will do it in your life. Tonight you will have a testimony. He has done it for others. He is doing it for others. And yours will not be an exception tonight in Jesus' name. In Jeremiah chapter 32. Jeremiah. Chapter 32, reading from verse 17. Here is the assurance the Lord is still giving us this. Ah, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power. Think about the whole universe. Think about what you can see. 
and what you cannot see. Think about the orderliness and the vastness of the earth. And this is what God has created in his mighty power, in his mighty strength. If he has done that, what do you think of the little problem you have, of the little challenge you have? He spoke and it came to pass. He's going to speak tonight. It will come to pass in your life. He spoke the words of power, the words of authority, and the words that breaks every yoke, and that God is still the same. His power is still the same. His authority is still the same. Tonight, it will come your way. Not God that was made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretch out arm. There is nothing too hard for thee. There is nothing too hard for thee. Can we say that together? In my life, there is nothing too hard for thee. In my family, there is nothing too hard for thee. In my job situation, there is nothing too hard for you. In my spiritual life, there is nothing too hard for me. Whatever you may seek is hard for men, it's not hard for God. Impossible for men is not impossible with God. The Lord will do it tonight. Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 19, rather. Matthew chapter 19, verse 26. For Jesus beheld them and said unto them, What does that mean? Is that Jesus is looking at the way you are thinking, He's looking at the analysis you are making about your problem. And then He stands in the front, in front of you, and He beholds you, He looks at you. And he says unto you, with men, this is impossible. But with God, but with God, all things are possible. In fact, the way God works instantaneously is almost surprising, almost unbelievable. I told you about the woman that had cancer in Togo. Another woman came there uh, to that Togo program. And this woman had been abandoned by the husband. This woman, having children, the husband left her and left the children. She was suffering. She became angry. She became bitter. And it was like she wanted even whatever will happen because she had been fed up of life. It had taken three years and the husband had been away. And the husband will not even contact her or give any money or send anything. They were totally, completely separated, although not divorced. And eventually she was brought to the meeting. At the meeting, as I was speaking, I said, whoever has forgiven, whoever has offended,